everybody. Hey, everybody. How are you? There we go. This is one of our little uh, streaming deals that we, we do uh, uh, once a week on, uh, on Zoom. It's kind of called our pop-up show, and we got a nice group of people. And in fact, uh, we got a bunch of them waiting. So let me admit all here. Let me see here. Uh, Shecky won't be with us today because Shecky's got to go have his eyes examined. Uh, so, we'll do that. hello everybody. How are you? It's Steve Bender. Hey, Steve. Uh, yeah, yeah. Move your camera down. There we go. And hello to Andrew Deutsch and hello to Brian Neary. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace is uh, ready to join us here as well. Good afternoon, all. How are you doing this fine day? Doing great. Good to see you. Yeah, how's, how's the health and wealth of your area today? Is uh, getting inside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting to get bad again here, <clears throat> which is bad because I've been going to the gym since the 25th, and now, ay ay ay. They're not going to allow you to, or what are they going to do? I, that's what I'm trying to find out because I think, yeah, I think they're going to close the gyms again. Oh, um, and everybody's really good at the gym. I'm I'm really happy. There's some young kids that go there too. The same thing, man. They have masks on all the way. Mm -hmm. They're wiping the machine down before they use it, after they use it. Yeah. And uh, there's not many people at the gym. I mean, there's usually maybe, you know, 50 to 60 people that would be there. And there's only been like maybe 15 at the most when I've seen. Um, so it's going to be sad if they have to close everything down. Well, well, you're in the business of testing. Okay. Uh, so you know a little bit about the nature of this. Do you think that there's any danger to you when you go there under those conditions? No. And they have these big fans now, those big ass fans, and they have the doors open, really good ventilation. But I mean, you're talking about all these kids that just had Halloween parties and they're all getting infected. And you have Thanksgiving. We canceled our Thanksgiving because, you know, we have other fa family down there. She has family down there, but you know, we're just concerned about, you know, everybody, different families getting together. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the last thing you want is, you know, find out you had it somehow and then you just gave it to you know, people in L.A. That would suck. Yeah. So we canceled that just because of the big peak now. It's hitting us, too. Wow. Wow. We're not going to be number one like Charlie, but, you know, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we should try to stay number two. <laughs> no, we're streaking ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're leaving everybody. Um, excuse me, I'm looking for my fan here so I can turn it on up here and get a little air in here because it gets it gets uh, it gets a little hot in here. Ah, here comes Marjorie. She's joining us as well. Hello there, dear. Hello. Look at how gray she's getting. <laughs> yeah, there she oh, is. she looks great. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of women, are going gray because that's all they could do during the COVID thing, and they kind of like the way they look. They look, you know. Yeah, my my wife is still debating back and forth. Really? What? Going, my wife's doing the gray thing, and she can't decide if she likes it. No. Oh. I'm past that point. Yeah, well, she, she, look, you know, what, what's happened is it's taken her so long to take care of the gray, okay, or have the gray come in, that why go back? You've gone to all this trouble, right? This is a year, but last summer I let it go gray for two months, and then I did the roots again. So during quarantine, <clears throat> why not? Yeah, right. <laughs> I've, I've been letting mine go gray for 50-something years now. So. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. I had my first gray hair in high school. Well, me too. Actually, wow. actually, she's the one that made me go gray. Well, I'm not <laughs> Is that what they call that? <laughs> flesh. <laughs> he went bald. Well, no, somebody else taught me to go flesh. Uh, hold on a second. I just want to see, make sure we're on okay. Yeah, we're fine. Um, uh, uh, somebody made me, uh, Robert Schimmel was a comedian long since passed you know i'll tell you something in a second but anyway uh, long since passed uh he's the guy who got me to not uh comb my hair over or wear my hair long okay um he was bald he was bald on top and he just shaved really close and he said do this and i said why you see i call a preemptive baldness 
you don't look at, you don't look bad when your hair is like this. But if you're like Danny DeVito and it's coming down on the sides, it looks horrible, you know. And then she's the one. Oh, what's that? Robert Robert Schimmel. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> you got uh, that? I was I was hanging out with him on May twenty second, nineteen ninety four, at eight thirty. Wow. <laughs> he, was, he really was funny. How did you suddenly find that? Huh? How did you suddenly find that? You, you had just had it right if you ever book. bought an alphabet word. <laughs> You were just waiting for Alex to mention. I saved all of my tickets when I was young. All the comedy stuff I have. A, I showed you a couple of years before. But yeah, yeah I, I have all these basketball, baseball. Oh my gosh, so many stacks of tickets. Yeah, now you don't have tickets. Now you just yeah. your phone. So. Yeah, I have all my concert tickets from oh, yeah. high school. I just throw them in a wicker basket, and you know, it's yeah. fun. Sometimes just reach in and see what you have. Well, I my first those, really my stuff. first concert was. My first concert was Elvis Presley's last concert here is at Cal Palace in 1976. My wow. parents used to go to Day on the Greens and they were really big rock fans. So they took me, that was my first concert they ever took me to. Well, uh, how old were you? I was, can't play that trick. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oddly enough, no, I, was, I was like six, I was like six. This is very strange, but I think, and I can't tell you for sure, but I think the first uh, concert I ever went to was Elvis Presley as well, mm. but yeah, so like, nine, it, nine like in nineteen fifty six or fifty <laughs> around wow. in there. Yeah. Ray yeah. Charles. Huh? Ray, Ray, Charles? Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Wow. I was the police. Wow. You're oh, yeah. yeah. I was. I think. Um, Jimi Hendrix opening for the Monkees at Forest Hills. Wow. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, God. Oh, that's crazy. And, and the funny part was you went for the monkeys, right? <laughs> I, I, didn't know really went, but I loved it. I came home and bought Are You Experienced because it blew my mind. And all the parents were, you know, complaining. And they eventually threw him off the tour because he was too loud and crazy. Oh, my gosh. How about you, Marjorie? Who what was the first concert you ever went to? I remember I can Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. um, but there was before that. I'm trying to think. Okay, well, I have two in common here. You say, Andrew, that it was Ray Charles. No, that was great. That was Charlie. Did you Charlie. Charlie? It was Ray Charles. And Marjorie said it was I can Tina see Turner. Uh, I, think I went to a concert because in those days, they didn't hold concerts a lot of times. They held what they called dances. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was Ray Charles was the star of the show. And the opening act was Ike and Tina Turner. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I, I, it may have been Frank Zappa, but I think it was the police that I saw first. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, uh, Jeffrey, what was your first concert? He's on mute. Oh, you have to turn your microphone on. Go ahead. I think uh, I saw Ray Charles in the village. Really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were like, the whole place, there was maybe a hundred people at most. Yeah, but well, you see, I mean, a lot of us older people, when we went to see Ray Charles, went to see him, not in concert, not in but in basically either a small club or a dance situation like it was over in, in, uh, in Richmond for me. Um, uh, and I had a couple of black friends who said, hey, you want to go see Ray Charles with us? So I went, okay. And I think I was the only white guy in the whole place, you know. Uh, yeah, we we saw at Oakland when I was young. We we saw and Houdini, right? Houdini, Run DMC, LL Cool J. Wait a Houdini, and then, being the magician Houdini. No, 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 no. Houdini, the group. <laughs> and then the group? then there was oh, one wait, group. Wait, 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 wait. I knew a lot, know a lot about music. I never heard of a group named Houdini. There's a rhythm and blues group, right? Well, yeah. more rappers than that. <laughs> WHO, right? Uh, yeah, so the freaks come out at night. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, and there was another group and they got, they got, they left. And then actually this other young group called the Beastie Boys came on there. Mm -hmm. And same thing. I was with all my friends I played basketball with, all the brothers, and we all went there. Mm -hmm. And I, I was joking with them because we're going to Oakland up up 880 and would see just a car full of black guys and not say i'm gonna die tonight and we kept saying that just because it's like i didn't see any white people there wow except for beastie boys wow sorry what was that oh a ringtone on my phone i forgot to silence i apologize oh 
Okay. When I was a, when I was a little kid on Long Island, I was you know, I went to this stupid summer camp. But the only good thing was once a month or so they would take us out for an evening thing. And one of the first things they took us to was Westbury Music Fair, where I saw mm-hmm. Little Stevie Wonder open for the Supremes. Oh wow! And that made an impression on you know eleven year old me or however old I was ten. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and they probably were on a Motown tour, is what that, that was. was. You know, watching yeah. Stevie, you know, play the drums and run around that little stage and do everything when he was like you know fifteen years old. Wait a minute, he ran around the stage and didn't bump into anything. Didn't bump into anything? No, I know. I know. You know, I I real I I uh, I did ask Stevie. A question I always wanted to ask him when I knew him years ago. And I got an answer. I said, Stevie, I need this answer because I've never been able to have the guts to ask anybody this blind. But how do you know when you're finished wiping your ass? (laughs) (laughs) What did he say? He said, "Uh, friction. You can tell when it no longer slides. <laughs> you can pretty well figure the toilet paper has done its job. Oh, he liked the question, though. He had no problem with the question. That's funny. He used to call me up at the, uh, on my show at like 3 o'clock in the morning because I was on overnight and say, hey, listen, uh, Alex, I'm going to drive by your studio and pick you up. You want to go out for, me, uh, for a ride with me? That's awesome. <laughs> I said, you, you driving? Yeah. <laughs> what, he would do, what he would do is he would go out to a parking lot, an empty parking lot, like a, you know, a supermarket parking lot that was completely closed at that time of night. And then he would get behind the wheel of the car and drive. Before all these conspiracy theory guys were so prominent, that was one of the main conspiracy theories was that Stevie Wonder isn't really blind. Oh, really? Yeah, there are a lot of people believe that he was... No, he was really blind. Yeah. By the way, I tried to book a background at the Four Seasons, but I I could only get one at the Ritz. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> okay. So that's my Giuliani impression. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, uh, uh, what was I saying? Uh, it's uh, we had the oh uh, oh yeah, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, and the other thing oh, I did Stevie Stevie Wonder. is that we I went to a party. And Stevie Wonder showed up. And of course, everybody's going, oh, Stevie Wonder is here, you know, because he had finally become a big star. And uh, I, I'd gotten to know Stevie. He knew me quite well because uh, he used me as good luck because he brought by an acetate. That was a, an acetate was what they did when they just first did a record. They would take the tape and they would make an acetate of it by just cutting the disc. Okay. And he would come by and play an acetate and a session he had just done so the first place superstition was ever heard was on my show really he brought the acetate from the studio cool. you know awesome. and, and that's, that's and, really cool and so he would come by every time he did a new record and play it first on my show because he considered it good luck because superstitious became a superstition or superstitious uh, became a hit uh, in spite of the fact that Motown was doing everything possible to keep him from having a hit. Now you w- wonder why, and it was because he made a deal with them when he, he, he was one of the only people whose contract ran out because he lived long enough. He was like seven years with them and finally the contract ran out and he said, I want a new one where I produce all my own stuff and pick all my own music and do all my own stuff. And they said, okay, go ahead, do it, but we're not paying for it. You just go do it and we'll release it, right? So he did this stuff, and uh, he then put it out, and because it, it, it became a big hit, and he considered the reason it became a big hit is because he played it first on my show. It was like a, it was like his own superstition. Okay, so I knew him quite well in that respect. That's and, really cool. Uh, uh, so I'm at a party, and he arrives, and everybody's going, "Stevie Wonder's here! Stevie Wonder's here!" And Stevie walks right by, and later on <laughs> the night, I I go up to him and I go. Boy, he said, hey, uh, Stevie, who's that? I said, Alex. Oh, he says, oh, Alex, yeah, hi. And I said, "Uh, boy, I'll tell you, this stardom thing has gone to your head. (laughs) He says, what do you mean? He said, you walked in and you didn't even recognize me. (laughs) (laughs) He liked that. (laughs) That's neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, These were uh, 
Uh, but the, I don't know, you know, it's amazing how I, I was thinking the other day, uh, well, first of all, let me, let me just say, I was, we were mentioning, uh, uh, what was the comedian again? Oh, God, Schimmel. Yeah. Robert Schimmel. <laughs> Robert Schimmel. And that he, I, he was dead. Uh, I was going through my phone book today because it seemed I had like double entries or something was going ter terrible with it. Uh, and uh, so I was kind of working on it and I started eliminating people and I started eliminating all the dead ones. Mm -hmm. I was amazed how many dead ones there were. I mean, Dennis Hoff went off and I left Ronnie's in for a while, you know. You've got some, haven't you, Marjorie, that you haven't? Yeah, I leave them in uh, because when I see their names, it's just a nice warm feeling, a nice memory. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Dennis Hoff, I just think of a whorehouse, you know, so well, it, doesn't, it doesn't really I, matter. You know? I call them just to make sure they're not really just avoiding me. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, there were so many on there. Bruce David, I, I re finally oh, right. put his name oh. off of there. Yeah, but do you people do that too? When somebody dies, you still yeah. leave them in your phone book? No, I take yeah, them out. Leave, take them out. Leave, yeah. Yeah. I, leave, uh, I leave them in. She, I had Ronnie scheduled for last week for one of our calls, right? And I still have it on my calendar. I couldn't remove it. I just okay. wouldn't remove it. Um, so it, you know, it, it's kind of kind of weird. But um, what was the other thing I was going to say? I don't know. I forgot. Schimmel. You were talking about Schimmel. Well, no, no. We, I just mentioned that Schimmel, uh, you know, when we were talking about him and I said he was dead, I said I, I was going through my phone book today. It reminded okay. me of that, that story, you know. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's uh, I don't know. It's, it, it, oh, it, what I did do, and, uh, excuse me, I'm out of it these days. Do I sound out of it or am I okay? Yes, you sound out of it. Do I? <laughs> A little bit. You're good. You're always critical, dear. Anyway. <laughs> she sees you every day, all day. That's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She has to put up with you all day, every day. No, anyway, anyway. So um, now what was I going to say? I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was thinking the other day, because we're talking about music, we're talking about concerts, about how human beings invented music. I mean, where does that come from? And why do we like listening to music? What is it about music that is so important to our lives? And it's not just our lives. I'm sure centuries ago, it was important to the lives of people then too. Yeah. And just the idea that we constructed this whole thing of making notes and making sounds and putting them in an order and playing them on instruments of our invention. I mean, it, it's, only, it's a completely human trait. Animals don't do it, you know, nothing else does. I mean, animals howl and do things like that, but they, they don't have instruments, you know. And it brings we invented people the, together. We invented the instruments, you know. And I mean, movies, another example of something that we invented that, you know, I think we put something on film and then we told stories with it First, we just showed trains coming into train stations. But then we started telling stories with it. And then we started, we added sound to it. And then we it added became, color to it. What? I think it became part of how we communicated the history before we had written language. It could be. I mean, I wish I could say it was that, that easy. Oh, look. Well, we, we've well, never had this person on our afternoon show, but here he is. And we'll get ready for the hideous wallpaper. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. We don't yeah. have the hideous wallpaper. We have Tony walking <laughs> down the street mask. with his iPod. And what is the uh, what is the mask you're wearing there, Tony? Peanuts. Peanuts. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. God, you taste it in your ass. <laughs> Jeez. I actually, I'm walking to put my numbers in for my mother. You're going to put the numbers in for your mother. Yeah, 613 well, box, 50-50. Well, the pick three for the night. And how often has she won with those numbers? Oh, actually, I hit for 390 about two weeks ago. For 390? So, 390 bucks, yeah. Really? Well, I, when my sister, I was. How much walking. money did it take in order yeah. to get that 390 bucks? <laughs> well, that's, that's another story. It's like a dollar <laughs> every day. My sister called me. She said, Did you play Bonnie's number? I said, Yeah. It came out. I said, No way. I have a mother screaming in the back. Is she lying? Because my sister usually plays a joke on me because she says, you're losing money with this. 
I says, I yeah. know. It's our, it's our old car license plate. That's why she doesn't. You know, I don't, I, I don't want to bring this up because I know this will grieve you greatly, but one day your mother's going to die and you're going to be worth absolutely nothing to this program. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Unless you need somebody to take care of you. I'll you will have nothing to contribute. <laughs> Exactly. Or he'll, he'll stop playing those numbers and then it's going to come up in the big lotto. Yeah. Turn yeah. your phone sideways. Let's see if we can get a, a, a panoramic view. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. Yeah. So where are you, Tony? Where are you exactly? I'm, I'm in Mass with Queens, so I'm walking. So I live in this area. So pretty much I'm walking to the pharmacy mm -hmm. to get to put my mom's numbers in. I usually go over there. Mm -hmm. It's like a couple of minutes away. It's a little cold out, Alex. Yeah. I had to put a jacket. I had to go back oh, in for a jacket. You. You're all bundled up. Yeah. yeah, if I don't put a hat on, I start feeling the cold on my ears. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a surprise for you. I'll let you go on this. I'll leave it at Jackie's and I got you a Nixon pin. You got me a Nixon pin? <laughs> I, I saw the new comics that this guy opened up. So he says, come on in. So I was in. And he says, you like political pins? I said, yeah, let me see what you got. And I saw Nixon. I said, I got to get this for Alex. I told you I'd be ready. I'll leave it by his house for you. Yeah, like, I'm, well, Shecky is coming here for, for Thanksgiving. So you just give it to him and then he can bring it out to me. Okay. You know, but thank yeah, you. Had a whole bunch. That's, that's You're very, welcome. It's very nice of you. You got I'm just it. I'm glad it wasn't something that had to do with Scooby Doo. <laughs> well, I got to buy some Archie comics from him. He has books that I want. So I got to go back there to negotiate a deal. Oh, really? Yeah, he had some little guy. Just I got to say about this guy. This guy is richer than any of us, I'm sure. Uh, number one, he has no place to spend his money. That's true. I go to shows with Chucky, but yeah, I really don't. Yeah. Other than music and books. Yeah. But, but, and he has these, he's been dealing in comic books for years, and he'll buy like a hundred copies of something and sit on it for a couple of years and then sell them all for 400 bucks a piece. I sold a Trump book again, Alex, a hundred and a quarter, some guy in California. A Trump? I last one at $125. Come on. That's my mother's book. We could eat for a week, I told him now. <laughs> for a Trump <laughs> comic book? Yeah. yeah and how much uh, did you pay for the Trump comic book? Two, I think $2.80. It cost me more to grade it than to buy it. Well, how, I left when they pay. I left when I when they buy. It. What a sucker! I wait, what's that dentistry in back of you? Family dentistry. Oh yeah, there's a dentist over here. I don't go to this one though. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break, so I can't go. <laughs> you say that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll give you a call tomorrow because I'm going to go into the pharmacy. Okay. Let's all bye, say goodbye bye, to Marjorie. Tony. We didn't get to see the hideous uh, wallpaper. Not yet. All right, Not take care. yet. It's a the, good, the good thing is he's got like 70 million more people he could sell those magazines, those Trump things to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if MAGA hats are going to be worth anything. Probably not. They make good fire starters. <laughs> because there are just too many of them. So uh, what do you guys think about everything that's been going on? Uh, we got uh, we got the COVID thing and we got the uh, Trump thing and... Uh, He's, I don't think he's ever going to leave office. I think we're going to have to take him out of there in handcuffs or something. Or he'll, I, set, I, or he'll, huh? set, up, he'll set up an alternative White House at Mar-a-Lago. Yep. Minions to, you know, believe that he's running things. <laughs> you know, I, you may actually. I know. Point. I, I think it's going to happen. Yeah. I got to wonder how the rhetoric's going to be when he's no longer protected by the office, when he's slandering and libeling and, Doing all well, these he's got a couple things. lawsuits against him uh, that are going to be... Well, right there'll be there. more. There are 11 lawsuits right now. Yeah, uh, there's actually more than that. But but the point is, while he's the president and he Ooh. says these things, he's protected by the office. Yeah. When, he, when he slanders somebody with a complete lie for the purpose of damaging their future career... There, there's a clear lawsuit. He could, he could rack up a hundred of them in just a day the way he tweets. Wow, I mean yeah. it's ridiculous. I can't, I can't go out and say something horrible about you, Alex. It would, in a way that would prevent you from being able to get a radio job, or you'd have a, a legitimate suit. I said something that was a lie, and I did it to damage your ability to earn income. Let me, let me inform you of something. Um, I can say anything about Trump I want to. Okay, Trump is mm -hmm. a baby raper. I have, I have proof positive that he actually raped mm -hmm. three-year-old babies. 
Okay. You want the photos? Yeah. Now, can 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 Trump sue me for saying that? He can. No, he can't. He 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 can if you're if you're not saying that it's alleged. If you're saying stating no, it as a no, fact, no, it could no, damage. No, no, I believe me, I know this because lawyers have sat down with me and told mm -hmm. everything I can do and can't do at radio station. Uh, a politician at various levels, but politicians, the higher up they are, the less they can sue you for what you all oh, look at. Be hey, careful of the language now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the less you can sue. When you get up to the president, he can't sue you, but he can say anything about you and he, you can't sue him. And he does. Yeah. But when he's not the president any longer. Well, if he then says it when he's no longer president, okay then he can be sued yeah but look who's by, here by, by the way that's our that's our poster sh child for our uh, for our show uh Hi, you can, it, we're going to use her on our newest ads you can Hi. feed a hungry child or you can turn the page <laughs> right, i bought i brought my friends for her to hang out with here you go look at the oh. look <laughs> <laughs> uh oh they didn't they're mad at me now we have to go talk to her teacher well not talk to her teacher they have a little small groups on Mondays for her, so. Oh, that's yeah. cute. Okay. Bye. Well, yeah. Adrian, Bye. good seeing you again. Good Bye, Bye you. Adrian. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow night. Okay. She's acting shy. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, um, it, it, it's, it, it's it, it, he can't really, he can't be sued for things he says right now. You, but, know, you say Alex Bennett is a, uh, is a uh, communist uh, threat to the country, blah, 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 whatever. He'd be right about, he'd be right about that. Yeah, well, I'm, hey, I'm the, head of, I, I'm the head of Antifa, I'm the president. I'm, I'm Q, by the way. It's nice to meet you. You're Q? Oh, yeah. Okay. We should hang Shit, out. Did I just say that on the public airwaves? Now, I'm in, now they're going to know. You, you know, we should, we should hang out sometime and compare notes. It's, well, it started as, you know, a fraternity prank a few years ago, and it's gotten out of hand. Yeah. Well, the thing was, I got a thing from Kevin. Uh, who sent me a uh, um, a thing, a, a Trump uh, uh, post or something, where he said that uh, QAnon, uh, not QAnon, but uh, Antifa was attacking uh, Trump demonstrators in Washington last uh, Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he sent it to me, and he said, uh, uh, "You guys are just troublemakers." I said, "Yeah, but they're only doing what I told them to." And, <laughs> uh, they're following instructions. All of a sudden, it was Antifa that was attacking the right. Trump people. All of a sudden, it's a bad thing to be anti-fascist. Well, I want to know how they know it's Antifa. I mean, is there a T-shirt? Are there hats? I mean, I can tell a proud boy because he's got a wears black and he's got proud boy written on his cap or whatever. You got to watch for the secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how's everything up in Connecticut there, Jeffrey? Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're causing us to get sick down here in New York. Tur is your microphone on? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. Can you hear me? This is on. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah. 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 No, there's a lot more people getting sick. Really? Yeah. In your neighborhood? No, my neighborhood is weird. People won't admit to anything. The, the, yeah. The yeah. Well, you, you admit to nothing. They admit to nothing. You still walk around with no mask. But how bad is it up in New, in Connecticut now? I think in New Haven and, and uh, somebody was telling me in Bridgeport, it's really bad. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which is the city. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know Yale is not coming back after Thanksgiving break. Right? They're sending everyone home and they're going to do remote only. Right. Well, you, well, you know, my <coughs> college in Massachusetts, she's never gone there. Day. The school, she, she goes at home. Wow. Yeah. Mm. It's oh, we're, not, not, it's, it's, we're not doing so good, right? You know, de Blasio almost pulled the school today, but he's going to let it go a little more. We're, we're like 2.8 now, right? Yeah, I would, if I were to Blasio, I'd send all the kids home. You know? Yeah, no, I would too. I really would. I would. Uh, and well, except not, that's 
very hard for the parents. I mean, especially if somebody's holding one or two jobs and keeping a family afloat. It's hard it's for everybody. To be able. Yeah. No one's happy about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> to begin with, to begin with, there should be money available to those people. Mm. Uh, but there is. They haven't worked out anything. No. So McConnell's I mean, going to fight it. They're never going to pass another. Thing. That's right. The president doesn't even exist. This these diseases even he he doesn't have it. Right. Magic he plays stuff. golf. That's right. So I mean, you know, it's it, it's it, it, the fact is that the problem is in this country. I'll tell you what's happening. And we saw a report today on uh, on the problems they're having in Europe. And they're closing everything down and everybody's going yeah. indoors and they're staying home. And if they go out, they're wearing a mask and they're washing their hands and they're doing everything. And they just want to, and what they want to do is try and at least strangle this thing before Christmas, because Christmas they'd like people to have some semblance of family. Okay. So if we maybe do it now, by the time we get to Christmas, we can go, okay, under these conditions, you can see each other. And they're doing it. And the reason we can't do it here is because, why they're doing it there and we can't do it here is I honestly believe is because they had a war over there. And they had to pull together at one time in their history. And now they're having to pull together at another time in their history. America's and they also know very how to selfish. do that. But well, America's they're... also very selfish, really. Yeah. Nobody That's... gives a shit. Yeah, I just think we're a nation of idiots. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, Seven million, seven million more people voted for him this time after four years of this. It's yeah, not even process that. But you know, yeah. Well, I take it from a good authority that the the election was rigged, and of course, yeah. rigged by the guy who said it. Was, <laughs> those people didn't exist. They were they were all fake ballots. That's my that's my take on it. If they want a conspiracy, I'll give them one. The Republicans cheated. And they're trying to cover it up by blaming the Democrats. Well, did you see how... Uh, I am being sarcastic about it. Did you see how, how um, Trump admitted that he lost? And then, yeah, he, then he pulled it back? Then he yeah. glossed over it. So yeah, I won. Said, uh, that was not meant to be a concession. No. You know. Like a kid teasing with the ball. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's, he's amazing. He's just amazing. Um, but... Uh, I mean, he's, in a way, he's less amazing to me than 71 million people going along for this ride. That makes me just ashamed to be an American. He's an anomaly. He's an insane. And 71 million will still be there. They'll still be there, right? You know, and they worship at his altar. By the way. I think I think that if he's prosecuted and the actual evidence comes out, 20% of those will never disbelieve it. They'll say, oh, it's absolutely bullshit. Only many, many of those who voted, voted against the idea of socialism, all these fake, these misinterpretations of words that we let them define. Absolutely. Yeah, they, we allow those those yeah, jackasses to weaponize words. I don't know that we let them define it. It's just that they have limited themselves uh, to um, uh, certain media, and that becomes their only influence. You know, that mm -hmm. becomes their only input in their lives, and uh, um, so they they are. Literally, it's the input in their lives that's causing the problem. Uh, yeah, but there's, I mean, the size of the rallies and all of the momentum and all of the craziness and the hype and the party give people the right to justify stupid decisions. Yeah. And th th they, do, they do redefine. For example, all, one, one Democrat is a socialist based on their definition of what a socialist, not a social Democrat, but a socialist, then they all are, they're all diseased, they're all, the difference is they're perfectly fine with winning by lying right. when the Democrats want to consistently tell the truth. By the way, you want to know a big lie that I suddenly realized the other day? There's this thing called Parler, which is the- Parler, yeah. Right. Parler. Free speech Twitter. It's a free speech, well, it's not the free speech Twitter. It's the right-wing Twitter. Right. Because right. all the people you can, uh, you can, uh, Hello. Look at look at the <laughs> post from are people like you know uh, the Fox Group and so on and so forth, but anyway, uh, they call them they call themselves sometimes the the uh, right wing Facebook 
of the right wing Twitter. Well, Twitter and Facebook are not the right wing or the left wing Facebook and Twitter. They've never had a political notion. They've let, it's been an electronic Hyde Park as it were. They let anybody use their freedom of expression uh, to come on and say what they feel. And, Except now uh, they flag certain things as they should. Well, I got flagged the other night. Are you ready for this? What did you do? I have a friend, Karen Babbitt. Uh, she's a comedian or was a comedian. And I knew her quite well in San Francisco. Her father, uh, incidentally enough, was the animator at Disney Studios who did the dancing mushrooms in Fantasia uh -huh. and did the, uh -huh. the you know, the, the evil queen in Snow White. Uh, he was a great animator, very famous animator. And you ask anybody about animation, they know about Art Babbitt. Um, in fact, he married um, Marge Champion, although oh, she had wow. another name at the time. Later, she became Marge Champion when she met, met uh, uh, married Gower. Um, but uh, anyway, um, uh, she uh, called me. Uh, she but she started out before she called me. Oh, look, Rick's, Rick got out of his eye appointment or he's through with it. Uh, a, a, anyway, um, uh, hey, 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 Rick, how are you? Hey. Where Fine, are you? I'm at the eye doctor. You're at the eye doctor. <laughs> <laughs> how many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Have, have, have you been at the eye doctor yet or are you just sitting in there waiting? Well, they just dilated or whatever the hell they do with the drops. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I thought I would check in. Yeah. No, it's great. Hey. <laughs> they closed the door on me just now because the door was open. So, yeah. Tony, so now called, I can talk. Tony called earlier. Did he really? Yeah, he has a gift for me that he's going to give you so that great. you can bring it out to me. Oh, okay. And is, it, it, is it rolls of bounty paper towels? No, 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 no. In fact, if he goes out to Costco, you're, get, you're going to try and get me bounty paper towels, right? Yeah. Because you say yours has tons of them. Yep. Ours never seems to have them. You know. Well, I could say something semi-racist, but Are, I won't. Are the places running out of toilet paper again? Is this happening again? Well, yeah. We, we just stocked up. I'm convinced we're going to have a shortage based on the number of sick people. You're probably really? right. I just stocked up the freezer, the fridge, and the paper goods, just in case. But what is it? All those people with COVID are in the hospital. They're not at home using toilet paper. What about what if they're the ones who make that stuff, Alex? It's people. Yeah, people make those the things, and they're sick. It. What'd you they're say? They're at the hospital. They're not running the machines, the slitters, to run the paper towel, and they're not butchering animals, and they're not packaging vegetables. Well, yeah. I've got lots of canned food there. I got a buddy that works for a, a major car manufacturing company, and uh, half of the departments are closed. Oh, geez. Wow. Geez. But don't worry, Mr. Now? Giuliani will fix it all. <laughs> so, uh, so Shecky is uh, in there getting his eyes checked uh, because he needs to get his driver's license. Well, I got the form. I got. Yeah. I passed that part. Which it, go, you lose your driver's license on uh, December December first. Right? But if so, you got to get it before then. So you need your eye test. Make sure he does the eye the eye, eye test and everything, and you don't have to do it there. Yeah. Right. So that's already taken care of. Oh, that's already taken care of. Yeah, the form is sitting to my right right now. Oh, oh, oh okay, good. And then, and then I just need my cardiologist to say, ah, oh, he ain't dying. <laughs> oh, really? You need a cardiologist now? Well, no, they said you need a doctor to say you're in good health. You know, you know about the problem from two oh, years ago. You had, um, he, what happened was a few years ago, he, you, you had a, a couple of incidences where you passed out, right? Well, I had an incident on the I-95, but I pulled over to the side of the road till it passed. But one of the passengers decided he needed to call a hospital. And once they called the hospital, they flagged your license. Yes. And then and you I was in the out. hospital for two hours, where they then sent me home, so to speak. Right. Well, and, and tell them how long you went without being able to drive. 
Uh, more than a year. More than a year. And that's why you have to get something from your cardiologist to say you're in. I mean, any doctor. I mean, I could actually ask the eye doctor, but I, you know, I'd rather see, I haven't seen a cardiologist who I like in, in a year. So it's like yeah. big deal. I'll go see. Well, if, you need, if you need a note, man, I, the four years ago during the election, there was a guy who wrote Trump a letter. You could probably go see. He's looking for work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dr. Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a, he's got a great looking beard and he writes, he writes letters. You'll, you'll be the healthiest guy in America. No. And crazy hair. Bigly healthy. Jackie's coming over for uh, for for Thanksgiving, and uh, this is for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was ninety eight when they did it here. Well, I am ninety eight too right now. Wow, that's high. Ninety eight zero. Yeah, that's Alex. what I was. <laughs> Alex, you were in the middle of the story about how you got flagged on Twitter, so I want to hear it to the rest of that. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I was uh, talking to Karen Babbitt. I was on Facebook with Karen Babbitt. And um, you, you know, um, he knows who Art Babbitt is, but Art Babbitt's daughter. And um, and she, his uh, wife, ex-wife died a couple of weeks ago. Got March Champion. March Champion. Yeah. Uh, he's, been dead, he's been dead for years, so he's not going to miss her. Um, but anyway, so uh, um, um, where was I going with this? Twitter. Oh, story, Twitter. Alex. Twitter. Uh. Yeah, I got to go. I keep remembering, not Twitter, but Facebook. Uh. So, I, so I say, give me a call. Love to talk to you. Something like that. And she said, good. Love you back. Love you back. And, and the next thing I know, I then write to give her my phone number or something like that so she can call me. And it says, we cannot put this through because it violates our policies. Putting up your phone number? It's something about, no, it had something to do with sex or something. They got it completely wrong. Their, their oh. law, <laughs> law, logarithms were reading it all wrong. They, they thought you were soliciting sex? Something like that, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, they just, they've got the, uh, the sensitivity thing turned on to high, you know. So the yeah, same thing happens with me over at YouTube. <laughs> the other day, we did one of these shows. How dirty do we get on these shows? Not very. I, 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 I don't think we even use uh, the, uh, the various words at all on this show. And yet, I got it flagged for not demonetization for one of these shows a couple of weeks ago. And wow. I'm going, what did they demonetize it for? So I asked them to recheck it, and they rechecked it, and they said, no, we were right. What? You know, so, I mean, I get a little frustrated with that. So they're getting a little too sensitive. I didn't know you couldn't swear on YouTube. You can. You should be able to. You know, not to any, you can't uh, get really gross, okay? Mm -hmm. But you can, you know, you can use a word here and there, sure. As long as it isn't in the title of the show, they said. As long as it isn't huh. the opening. So, yeah, my podcast, I haven't had any issues, but we don't swear. So. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but do you do YouTube or? I do. It's on YouTube. Your podcast or YouTube, and they never. I've sent you the link. You just don't want to look at it. <laughs> I did look at it once. Did you? Yeah. Send me another link so I can look at it some more. What's the best way to send to you? Just Facebook Messenger or? Uh, uh, yeah, Facebook Messenger is fine. Or Alex at Gabnet dot net. Oh, okay. You know. Uh, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, by the way, Shecky, I was watching, I didn't show Marjorie this yet, but I was watching another Letterman, and there you were as Elvis. <laughs> you were a great the Elvis. worst Elvis impersonator in history. No, maybe one of the better. I mean, you know, uh, but, uh, but it was the one where they, uh, 200 uh, Elvis impersonators, and they doubled you over and doubled you oh, over. Oh, yeah. Doubled you over. Yeah, that one. Um, so... You watched the Letterman interview with Chappelle? It's great. Yeah. Great. It was I terrific. It was fast. terrific. Yeah. I mean, uh, those shows are good little shows. Really good. He, yeah. He's even better when he has to research the interview before he does it. <laughs> I got this thing from, from... Well, because he's talking to people he wants to talk to. Right. So he's yeah. interested. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was... Uh, uh, he, uh, you know, is, is a great interviewer. And um, I think he did a great job with Chappelle. That was and, fantastic. It was riveting. Huh? I learned so much. It was. Yeah. 
so anyway, I mean, Chappelle uh, was a good interview, and there were what, what is that sound coming from? I don't know. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Oh, by the way, it's your friend Stephen Pearl's birthday today. Oh, is it Pearl's birthday today? Oh, yeah, Facebook told me. Oh, Facebook told me too, and I forgot to write him. I'll have to write him right after this. You've just guilt me to me guilt me <laughs> guilt me into it. God, I'm so out of it today. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is just amazing. It never used to be like this. I was the smoothest talker in radio. But no, I've been very lethargic today. So really, yeah. Well, how how many of you have had or are going through COVID fatigue? A little bit. I mean, I'm I am tired all the time. How about you, Steve? You. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, my head hits a pillow. I could fall asleep pretty much any time. I do, yeah. I mean, yeah. you lose all sense of time and days, and it's just weird. It's just surreal. It's like being in a casino in Las Vegas. Right. Yeah. How do you separate it from election fatigue? <laughs> um, well, because the election is over and I'm still tired. It's not over. Is, I mean, the election's over, over the, the, until January 20th, we're all still in a holding pattern. Do you think it was a combination of election fatigue and COVID fatigue? That I do. To us? I do. Right. And then to go from the, you know, the elation, the dancing in the streets, you know, back to the craziness of <laughs> and, the, and COVID on the rise again. You know, that moment didn't last very long of celebration. It was just back to this crazy reality. We're back to the crazy reality that, you know, things have got to be done. Right. Yeah. It's exhausting. It is I mean, uh, it's too bad Biden can't do something about COVID right now. Yeah. Well, you saw Trump is selling off the Alaska oil fields before he leaves. Oh, really? Yes. He's having the auction like the week before inauguration. Yep. And, and drawing troops out of Iraq and yeah. Afghanistan and anything else he can do to sabotage the country. Yeah. Well, I said that he, you know, being the businessman that he is, the really astute businessman that he is, <laughs> the way he was going to solve our financial problems in this country was by burning the country down and getting the insurance money. Okay. They've done well, it that an article today of all of his hotels, how much he owes, what the interest rate is on those loans and all that kind of stuff and who, you know, the loan E is, you know, and, Here's what they're, you know, you know what the, uh, what our, our CIA and so on are worried about is that Deutsche Bank is selling off all those loans to anybody who wants to buy them. That includes foreign governments. Yep. And he, yeah, the Deutsche he, Bank is a foreign government. They're German. Yeah. But I mean, but it's not a foreign government. It's, it, it's no, a but foreign it's still a foreign bank. Who will then say to him, you got the secrets. We want them. We forgive the loans if you give us the secrets. And he will. Yeah, he yeah. will. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the family. I mean, Jared Kushner has been known to burn buildings of his to get his tenants out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and cause cause noise throughout the building to get people to want to move out so he can yeah, sell. All kinds of horrible things. I know people yeah. that have been forced out of his buildings. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, so anyway, what... I, I just want us to get to a point where we call it post-COVID, you know? It'll be a while. We call it post-Trump. And yeah. then we just get on with trying to rebuild everything and try to make our lives better. Anyone, anybody see John Oliver last night? It was great, yeah. It's good. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was CGI that he was using. At the end of the show, he's outdoors, and there's this big, giant thing that says 2020. And it's got stairs going up to it where there's a red door that he comes out of and goes down it and so on, right? And I figured, oh, that's all CGI. Then they blow the thing up. <laughs> and I watch it and I'm going, this, I know CGI. This isn't CGI. They actually built that set and blew it up. <laughs> and I went, that, you know, and the, the parts are going up in the air and they're falling to the ground and I'm going, Apparently, he didn't have much money he had to spend over the last couple of months doing this show because of the COVID thing. So he took all the extra money he had and built this giant 2020 so he could blow it up. Well, on January 20th, we're celebrating by blowing up bags of Cheetos. 
So. <laughs> really? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Good. Good. You know. On the day when they announced the Biden victory, that Saturday, there were people in Union Square stomping on bags of Cheetos. Were there? That's great. Really? Yeah, yeah. God. It's not the Cheetos' fault. What a crazy year, you know. Oh, God. Unbelievable. Then Friday the 13th hit the other day, and everything in my studio went wrong. That's why I didn't do a show on Friday night. It just all went wrong. You know, I don't wish the guy any harm. I hope he gets public housing at a private uh, facility so that he can see what, what private prisons are like. Yeah. And a long time without, so he can make his hair go, go gray, just like all the people who were stuck at home for COVID. Mm -hmm. a lot of, I'm wishing him a lot of good things. Well, now the question is, the big question going around is, how long is it going to be before malaria leaves him? <laughs> well, she renegotiated her prenup before she moved to Washington. Yeah. So I would imagine based on that very soon. Some people are saying she's Day. leaving before the inauguration. Yeah, but then he's going to marry Hope Hampton or whatever her name is. Hope <laughs> Hope Hicks. Hicks. <laughs> or Ivanka. Yeah. He, yeah so he could be more, he could be more attractive to, to the, your daughter. he could be more attractive to the country folk. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's got a lot of biker Tell people. Babes. A lot of biker babes who will you know, do whatever. Uh, it's it's just you know I'm it, it, I, I just the other day I looked at Marjorie and I went you know this guy has literally lost his mind. Mm -hmm. it's a He's sick not man. in control of his yeah his, his abilities. Mm -hmm. I mean he is just going crazy, writing things like we won. <laughs> Really? What in the world of over 200, uh, 303 or 304 uh, electoral college votes and 5 million popular votes is we won? How does that? Right. When he, keeping, keeping people believing that is for his best interest. When he won with far fewer votes than this, it was a landslide. Because he's monetizing his loss. Yeah. Yes. Just and, in his brand. And, and, he's and, and securing his base. Well, did you see did you see all those letters he sent out to, to his people? Yeah. Oh, we need money to fight this thing to, to pay off his debts. That's what that money yeah. is going and for. And he said, right in the small uh, print, 50, it's 50, like fifty percent of this money can go to paying off uh, debts. Right. And uh, I'm going. He's using as 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 money raising. You know, he doesn't even sell timeshares anymore. You know, he's he's just the. You know, it's it's. It's sad, and it's, you know, when he finally goes, it will just be so nice to have a semblance of some kind of order when Biden is in office. You know, it's, it's not going to be easy for him. This is going to be the roughest job a president ever had a, ahead of him. He's got the COVID thing to take care of, the economy to take care of, the, 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 the divisiveness in the country to take care of. Just just before the show started, Alex, uh, Biden was giving a press conference. Yeah, and, we were. And it was it was very assuring in what he had to say. Of course, it's all talk still. We haven't seen action. But, what did he say uh, that made you feel somewhat? Uh, he these same people who Trump seems to think are part of his you know team, the CEOs. He had a sit down meeting with all of them, and the unions and other business leaders, and started to talk about how to actually bring jobs back with the same people that Trump seems to think are his people, the CEOs of different different companies. So that was part of it. And then also talking about talking about his specific plan for for green energy jobs and how that how that would supplement the economy, also passing the, the HEROES Act so that people don't have to go back to a dangerous job and infect their families and, and be able to have money for people to spend. The only reason the economy continued to grow was from stimulus money. People were still spending. Now people don't have any money. They're about to get kicked out of their homes and the, the economy will fall off a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. So he was, a lot of what he was talking about were things that, that made sense. See, I think that what he should do and the way he should handle it, well, that eye doctor's taking his time getting to you, isn't he? He said 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, That's why I called you. The fact is, 
you know, that he that what Biden should do, it should literally when he comes into office, mandate masks. Mm -hmm. I'm asking all of you to do this on a voluntary basis. He is doing that. I'm asking you to do it now and to stay home as much as possible. If you don't, then that's going to force me to enact sure regulation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to jump off. Okay. Goodbye. Yeah, Good eye test. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, as you say, without enforcement, how do you do it? If well, I mean, but how you do it is you prevail on the American people saying, look, if you don't do it, I'm going to have to take draconian measures to make sure that we do cut this thing off at the knees, you know, for the health of the country. But I don't want to have to sit here and tell you to do it. You should do it on your own because you want to be part of the, the part of the solution, you know? Of course, but how do you imagine those draconian measures, if it comes to that happening, what are you going to do? It's tyranny. He can, he can, you know, he can mandate masks. That's, okay, so I'm not, that's what I'm saying. He sh and I think he should. But if he mandates masks and these 70 million people say, no, I'm not doing it, then well, what? Well, then you start enforcing it. You start, uh, you start, uh, you, 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 you. My wife will like, kill them all. For no, them no you, issue, you issue tickets, citations, when they're not wearing masks. going to do that? Law enforcement doesn't wear masks in this city. Oh, well, it, it, that was another thing that got to me. I took a picture of a couple of cops standing on a street corner without this masks. Yeah. And I put it on my Facebook page, and people were giving me a bad time for it. Sure. They were going, how dare you? You should support the police. I'm going, they're not wearing masks. Right. You I mean, know. I couldn't get the police to enforce a mask mandate in many places. And I went back the next day to that corner, and they weren't wearing masks again. And if they won't do it in New York City... They're not going to do it in, you know, South Dakota. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of that has to do with our mayor, who really is kind of wimpy about all of this. That is alienating the police. I mean, I mean, our governor had the ability to say, if you go down on the subway without a mask, you can get a ticket. Okay. Uh, but there's not that same thing about walking down the street. Everybody should wear a mask because that's how we're going to kill this thing. There's no question. But has anyone gotten a ticket? No. no. Has anyone gotten the message? No, I mean, some people Although have. I will have to say, as this thing has gotten worse, and, and Charlie's in just the, God, just stay indoors, Charlie. Just don't go out there. It's dangerous, okay? Uh, the fact is that um, um, things have gotten worse and worse, and I found the other day in my neighborhood, a lot of people not wearing masks, okay? The other day I went out, and about, I'd say, 90% of them were wearing masks. So the, it's, it's changed. People are looking at what's going on around the country and going, I don't want to be part of that. You know, even I'm seeing it, too. Well, so, huh? you know, I was out <clears throat> uh, the other night, and I was walking down a block with a ton of restaurants. We were supposed to be operating at 25%. Mm -hmm. They were at least at 70%. Wow. Every one of them. Yeah. Well, I understand they have to make money, but still, it's not right. It's well, then, they, then they, the liquor authority should go in there and start pulling licenses. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know, and a few licenses get pulled, and they'll start going back down to their 25%. Yeah. No, it made me so sad. The That's only thing, and then we got, I guess we got to leave on this, is that the governor made a law that uh, we, we're going back to something where you can only have 25% uh, indoors, and That's outdoors, fun. you can seat as many as you can with social distancing. And, and this was the end, everybody has to close down at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, so COVID stops, it starts going up after 10 o'clock at night. COVID goes to sleep at 10 hours. No, but then he, he explained it. He said, the reason is, is that they're doing that in New Jersey and they're doing that in Connecticut. And if we don't do it here, they're going to say, well, we can't drink anymore in New Jersey. Let's get in the car and go to New York and drink. So to keep that from happening, that's why he's closing down at 10. So. Makes some sense. Hey, listen, this has been really nice. Just, just a nice little group of people, you know, just friendly, happy. Time flies by. But... Yeah. And, <laughs> and, you, and you can watch me get go, slowly you know, descend into uh, <laughs> uh, senility. Anyway, 
Uh, thank you, Steve Bender. Thank you, Andrew Deutsch. Love hearing from you. Thanks to Charlie Wallace, Marjorie, Jeffrey. Also, thanks to uh, 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 Mr. Neary and uh, uh, Brian Neary, and also uh, to Tony and to Jackie, who were also here and had other places to go and other things to do that were more important than us. Uh, so thank you, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye to them, folks. Bye-bye. There we go. Okay.